Welcome, welcome everybody, this is our 12 noon prayer watch, day 20, glory to God, welcome, invite somebody, Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Yes, Lord. Dear of God, we thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we worship you. Father, we exalt your name. We exalt you. Yes, Lord. We surrender. We surrender, Lord. We surrender, King of Glory. We give you everything, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Yes, let's just begin to pray in the Spirit. Father, we thank you. Father, we exalt you. Father, we worship you. Father, we give you all the praise. We give you all the adoration. Spirit of God, we thank you for this hour of prayer. Lord, we give you all the praise. We thank you. Somebody begin to worship the Lord. Thank him. Day 20. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Father, we worship you. We glorify your name. We say you are mighty. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you, Spirit of God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, O oh Lord. We thank you, mighty Father. We give you everything, Jesus. We withhold nothing. We withhold nothing today, O oh God. We withhold nothing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name, O oh God. We bless your name, King of Glory. Thank you, Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Amen. I want to welcome everybody. God bless you. Those of you watching here, those that would watch afterwards, those that would watch on YouTube, I want to say God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us. I believe that from tomorrow, we will begin to be on, on Instagram as well. Hallelujah. I just want to quickly check. I want to very quickly check Instagram. Hallelujah. I believe so much that from next, from tomorrow, by the grace of God, we shall be going live on Instagram. Hallelujah. I believe God that we will be able to do that. Yes. We should be able to today. I'm just trying to see how, if we can, okay, praise God, praise God. So it's possible for us to go on Instagram live. So we're going to work on that maybe tomorrow by the special grace of God. We should be able to go live tomorrow on Instagram or probably this evening. Yes, probably this evening we should be able to go live. Yes, so those on Instagram can take part in what God is doing with us. Hallelujah. I just want to see if I were going to get a good angle from here. Yes, I think so. So, yeah. So let me just go on very quickly on Instagram and say hello to those on Instagram. Hallelujah. Hello everyone on Instagram. How are you? God bless you. God bless you. This is Prayer Jumpstart. I know a lot of you have been asking us to come online. So finally we will be on Instagram. Hallelujah. So today is day 20 of our 30 days fasting and praying. So I believe strongly that tonight, 6 p.m., whatever you do, 
you're going to join us on instagram those on facebook god bless you i'm just using my phone this is my first time going on instagram on our prayer program so those of you that keep telling me woman of god i'm not on facebook yes we are coming on instagram by the grace of god tonight 6 p.m whatever you do join us jesus the yoke breaker and i believe that god will bless you and i god bless you but at the moment i'm back on facebook thank you so much have an awesome 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 time in the presence of god god bless you oh i see somebody joining god bless you hello how are you god bless you thanks for joining us today is our day 20 of our 30 days fasting and prayer i see three people already on instagram wow instagram seems to be so quick praise god welcome everyone i just wanted to say hello to everyone we are on facebook right now just tune into apostle laziness see um paid my official page and watch us on facebook but tonight 6 p.m i'm coming back and we'll be praying together by the grace of god god bless you bye so let me end it okay it's ended and wow that was awesome that was awesome that was awesome that was awesome so yes today is day 20 let's just begin to worship god thank the lord say father we bless your name father we worship you we exalt you we honor you jesus for what you are doing in our midst we thank you O oh lord for great is your faithfulness great is your mercy great is your kindness spirit of god we thank you for what your mighty power is doing in our midst lord we don't take it for granted so we say thank you we thank you for the enabling grace we thank you for your power we thank you for your glory that is being seen amongst us father even as today we are looking at jesus the yoke breaker father i pray that whatever that seems to tie anyone down that lord today those yokes will be broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever that seems like a stronghold, I declare by the power of God that that yoke will be broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, just open to the book of Matthew, chapter 21. And we shall be reading from verse 1. Hallelujah to verse 10. Praise God. Are we ready? We are strengthened in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says, Now when they drew near Jerusalem and came to, Beth to Bethage, at the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt and a foal of the donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded. They brought the donkey and the colt and laid their clothes on them and set him on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. Hallelujah. People of God, I want us to look at the story 
of this donkey that was tied. Hallelujah. And a colt that was with her. The Bible says they were yoked and tied up. The donkey and the colt. And Jesus said, loose them and bring them to me. Praise God. So when we say Jesus, the yoke breaker, I want you to know that God is interested in breaking you out of any stagnation. Hallelujah. The Bible says, go to the village opposite you and immediately you will find a donkey tied. So there are times in people's lives, there are things that you see, they may appear in the ordinary that they are just standing there. But the master saw that they were not just standing, they were tied down. Praise God. And he said, lose them and bring them to me. Hallelujah. They were tied, but in the eyes of God, they shouldn't be tied. And he said, if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the Lord has need of them. And immediately he will send them. So you see that this donkey was tied, stood in one place, stayed in one condition, stayed in one situation, and there were people monitoring the donkey in that tied up situation. That's why the topic says Jesus, the yoke breaker. Because Jesus knows that there is work for you to do. Destiny is calling. Your life is calling for you to move upward and forward. Hallelujah. So the word of God is saying, Jesus said, if anyone asks, why is this call tied? Tell them the master has need of it. So Jesus, the yoke breaker, wants to break up whatever that appears like a yoke in your life. Amen. Because when you become, when the yoke around you is, is taken off you, you become useful. This donkey was tied, unknown, sitting in one corner, doing nothing with its life. It was stagnant and just staying like that. But the minute this donkey was set free and he allowed Jesus, hallelujah, he allowed Jesus, he allowed Jesus to sit on the boat, on, on the colt. Something happened to that colt, to that donkey. That donkey received honor. That donkey received recognition. That donkey no longer became something that was to be at the roadside, tied up. The Bible says, so when the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded, they brought the donkey and the, and the colt and they laid clothes on them and set him on it. Child of God, every time you allow Jesus to sit on your life, Child of God, you receive a cloth of honor. The Lord begins to clothe you. The Lord begins to clean out every nakedness. The Lord begins to cover you with honor. The Lord begins to use you for his own glory. The Bible says suddenly, when Jesus was set on that, on that donkey, what happened? A very great multitude came and spread their clothes on the road. Every time, child of God, you allow God to use you. You know, many times people say, I'd, I'm okay where I am. I'm okay in my situation. I'm okay in my condition. This is how I want my life to be. This, I don't want any, 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 anything. I'm just okay in this tied up circumstance. But see what the Lord is saying. See what happened to the donkey. The minute the donkey allowed Jesus to take charge of his life, the minute the donkey allowed Jesus to sit on the boat of its uh, to sit on, on him, the Bible says suddenly, as Jesus was being lifted, the donkey too was moving. <laughs> the donkey used to uh, before walk on the road, but now they spread clothes on the floor for the donkey to ride on. So anyone that allows Jesus to sit on them and take away their yoke. The Bible says my yoke is easy. The yoke that Jesus puts on you becomes an easy yoke. This donkey 
had the yoke of a belt or ropes tied to it. But now when Jesus sat on it, it also looks like something heavy. But in the realms of the spirit, it is something light. It is something that comes with honor. It is something that comes with dignity. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, and I read, that the, a very great multitude, they began to spread their clothes on the road. They began to cut down the branches from the tree and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed after, they began to cry out. And they were now saying, who is this? Because now the donkey is now, is now the one that Jesus is sitting on. So the same red honor that Jesus gets, <laughs> I don't know if you, if you caught this, the same honor that Jesus gets is what the donkey was getting. The same recognition the donkey and Jesus was getting, that was what the donkey was getting. Why? Because Jesus was sitting on it. So when Jesus breaks off your yoke, child of God, you must serve him. When Jesus takes off the burden of your life, child of God, you must live for him. When Jesus takes off the, the yoke that men have tied you down with, this donkey has been tied down with this yoke. This donkey has been put in one spot with this yoke. This donkey has been in this circumstance with this yoke. But when Jesus when Jesus took over the boat of the life of this donkey, the donkey became a different man. The donkey became different. The donkey received honor. The donkey became something or that, that people that used to look down on it now saw Jesus riding on it. And this can be likened to you and I. There is no one that allows Jesus to use them. There is no one that allows Jesus to sit on them and brood over them, that their life ever remains the same. Every time Jesus enters a situation, he breaks off the yoke. The Bible says, tell them that the master has need of it. Child of God, what is that yoke that is holding you? The master has need of your life. What is that circumstance that is holding you? The master has need for you. What is that situation that is keeping you bound? The master has need of you. What is that, 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 that belt that has been tied around you that will not allow you to move? Or you take some steps forward. Suddenly there are many steps behind. And you keep moving from here to there. You know, when they tie a donkey with, with a rope, they, they give it a circumference. This is the only movement you can make. You can only move to the left to this way. You can only move to the right to this way. But when Jesus takes over, when Jesus removes that belt, when Jesus removes that rope, child of God, your life can never remain the same. Suddenly what happens? You see movement. The donkey had movement. Child of God, I don't know what has yoked you till now. I don't know whether it is doubt or unbelief or you, someone has said to you, nothing good can come out of you. And that has kept you tied. Rakabos kebos kanda. That has kept you stuck in one in one spot. But today I've come to tell you that Jesus, the yoke breaker, is here. Jesus, the one that breaks yokes, is here. Jesus, the one that crushes yokes, is in the house. Jesus, the one that destroys yokes, is in the house. Jesus is able to break off every limitation. Everything that has been tied around your neck. The Bible says by the anointing, the yoke shall be broken. Whatever that seems like a yoke. Child of God, if you would let Jesus in. If you would let Jesus enter. If you would let Jesus rule your life. If you would let Jesus follow. If you would let Jesus lead you. If you would let Jesus walk with you. If you would let Jesus take off that yoke off you. Ah, child of God and say, Father, here I am, use me. I am yet to see somebody who God used.
that God did not beautify. God will cause men to beautify you. God will cause people to beautify you. God will cause situations to beautify you. When you allow Jesus to sit in your life, when you allow the yoke breaker to come into your circumstance, child of God, there is no yoke that can keep you bound. It doesn't matter who supervises the yoke. When the anointing comes in, it breaks asunder every yoke. When the anointing comes in, Jesus sent only the word. He sent his disciples with his word. And the very word he sent caused her that, 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 that donkey to be set free. Today the Lord has sent me to you, child of God. I don't know what is yoking your life. I don't know what is holding you bound. I don't know what is keeping you in one position. I don't know what is keeping you in one situation. But I have a word for you from the Lord. That yoke is coming off your neck in the name of Jesus. That yoke is coming off your neck in the name of Jesus. That yoke that has been tied to you. That yoke that has been tied to your destiny. That burden that has been put on your shoulder. Right now in the name of Jesus. We command let the burdens be lifted. Let the burdens burdens be lifted let the burdens be lifted in the name of jesus everything that looks like a burden in your life hear the word of the lord we speak right now marakaboko santaya we command let the yokes be broken let the yokes be broken let the yokes be broken every yoke around your life every yoke around your neck right now in the name of jesus we command those yokes to be broken. We command those yokes to be broken now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. The Bible says, Then Jesus went to the temple of God and drove out those who bought and sold in the temples and overturned tables of the money changers and the seat of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written. Somebody repeat it. It is written. And he said to them, it is written. My house. My house shall be called the house of prayer. What is the house of God? You. You. You are the house of God. In him you live. In him you move. In him you have your being. You are the house of God. And the Lord is saying, you my house shall be called the house of prayer you my house shall be called the citadel of prayer he said but many have turned it to a den of thieves that is why you see when they call for prayer people have no low attention span even to pray for 10 minutes even to pray for 20 minutes the enemy will tell them no you don't have time to pray but when it comes to gossip channels, when it comes to things that are worldly, every sensual appetite comes alive. Because the flesh doesn't like to pray. Prayer is a thing of the spirit. That is why we dominate the flesh. The flesh wants to sleep. The flesh wants to gossip. The flesh wants to watch reality shows. But the spirit knows that it thrives under prayer. I want you to say, Father, I am your house. I shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. My life, Hakarabos Kendarabash Kinderekebos Sataya. My life is the house of prayer. Somebody cry out to the Lord. Father, by your spirit, I am the house of prayer. Let prayer, let prayer speak in everything I do. Let prayer be the way forward. Let prayer be the unction. Let prayer be the movement. Over my life, somebody begin to pray. And my house shall be called the house of prayer. So child of God decree, every prayerlessness, whatever that causes your life not to operate under that unction of prayer, command it to lose its grip. Command it to lose its grip. Command it to lose its grip. Libra sutarabash kendere boko sataya. Lendere kalabra sontorobosh kinder. My house shall be called the house of prayer. 
the house of the Lord shall be called the house of prayer. The, com the, 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 the body, your body is the house of prayer. The Bible says it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Child of God, begin to say it over your life. My house, the house of the Lord is you. You are the house of the Lord. You shall be called the house of prayer. In the morning, in the noontime, the Bible says men ought always to pray and not to face. Say, Jesus, every yoke of prayerlessness in my life. Father, let it be broken off me in the name of Jesus. Everything that causes me not to pray. Ah, Father, today in the name of Jesus, let the yoke of prayerlessness, let the yoke of spiritual laziness, let it break off me. The Bible says, Matthew 21, verse 13, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Father, from henceforth, I decree, I will not play hot and cold, but the spirit of the living God, I receive that fire, that fresh baptism. I will not be among those who pray only because I've been told I'm leading prayer. I will not be among those who pray because I'm coming out on social media. I will not be among those who pray because, because I've been told to pray. But Lord, my life, my life, which is your house, my life where the Holy Ghost resides, my life where the Spirit of God lives, my life where God the Father, God the Son lives, hallelujah, shall be called the house of prayer. My life is not the life of buying and selling. Jesus said they have made it a den of thieves. Some people have allowed life to turn their house, this body of Christ, this body that was brought, Jesus broke his body to make you whole. Your body, everything in you is a house of prayer. But for some people, Jesus, the Bible says, then Jesus went into the temple and drove away those who bought and sold. What is buying and selling in your heart? When you are full of worry, you are buying and selling. The devil is selling fear to you and you are demanding worry. The devil is selling all manners of distractions and procrastination. Jesus had to drive out the money changers. Jesus had to drive them and the seats of those who sold those. Those flying things that fly into your thoughts. Those flying things that fly into your memory. They're coming like that into your mind, telling you things you do not need to hear. But Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Somebody say, Lord, in this season, let me tell you, prayer is a discipline. Let nobody deceive you. The flesh does not like to pray. Even when you see some people that are going through very serious situation, they sit back and they say, hey, ho, oh, ho. Oh. They are not praying. They are just reminiscing over their problem. They are just thinking over their problem. They are just crying over their problem. But the Bible says, my house shall be called the house of prayer. So when problems come, you arise like a child of God and say, Satan, not today. I am the child of God. I come against this situation. The Bible says what I bind is bound in heaven. What I lose is loosed in heaven. Satan, you are not permitted in my household. Satan, you're not permitted upon my family. You're not permitted upon my, my children. You're not permitted upon my marriage. You begin to war. You don't sit back. That is what the word of God says. That my house shall be called the house of prayer. When your house, when your body is the body and the house of prayer. When you see things going wrong in your nation. When you see things going wrong in your environment. You say, not on my watch as an intercessor. I bind every spirit that is moving around the atmosphere. Whether they say they are killing people. Whether they say there is sickness. The Bible says as the mountain surrounds Jerusalem. So does the Lord surround them that fear him. You begin to speak God's word back to him. You begin to pray the word of God. You begin to decree and declare that there is peace in my land. There is tranquility in my land. That is what prayer will do to you. Prayer will equip you. Prayer will cause you to march gallantly into many, into many levels. I tell you, child of God, show me a champion and I show you somebody who has traveled in prayer. Prayer is the food for champions. Let me tell you, every great victory, what, pre what precedes it is prayer. When Jehoshaphat, when the kings of Ammon came against
against him. Jehoshaphat did not go crying. Jehoshaphat did, Jehoshaphat did not go negotiating. Child of God in the place of prayer. We don't negotiate with the devil. We don't negotiate with the powers of darkness. We warfare. We warfare. We go into the courts of heaven. We enter into the gates of praise. We appear before the presence of God. And we say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I said, Jehoshaphat went into the temple and said, Lord, is it not you? Did you not make this covenant with your servant Solomon? And when he had prayed, the Lord said to them, you will not need to fight in this battle. When you engage it, when your house is a house of prayer, child of God, you receive divine strategies. Hallelujah. You receive divine strategies. These strategies help you to know how to channel your weapons. These strategies help you to know, do I enter into praise warfare or do I go on my knees for seven days? Do I do dry fasting? Do I go into praise fair? Whatever God tells you, this is what you need to do. It is in the place of prayer you receive divine instructions. It is in the place of prayer you receive strategies to know because let me tell you what differentiates a champion and a loser is strategy. And where do you get strategy? Your house shall be a house of prayer. Glory to God. The house of God. I'm not talking about the church. I'm not talking about the physical temple. I'm talking about this, your earthly suit, which is the legal ground that gives you authority to rule here on earth. I'm talking about this earthly suit that you're wearing. This body, this voice, this movement that you make because of the flesh and the blood that reigns through your body. You have a legal ground to stand on earth and speak a word and it comes to pass. That is what prayer will do to you. Prayer will cause you that even when people are, when you're going through the storm, people, the fourth man stands beside you. When you're in the midst of the fire, people are looking at you and saying, is she not in the fire? Is he not in the fire? But you say, but Lord, I am a man of prayer. A man, a woman of prayer goes through the battle and they come out unscathed. Even in the midst of famine, those who are people of prayer, they live in Goshen. They have more than enough. The Lord begins to open doors. Child of God said, Father, I declare that my life will be a life of prayer. Child of God, you cannot afford not to be a person of prayer. I especially tell women, you cannot be a mother and not be a woman of prayer. You have to pray to the fourth and the fifth generation of your children. A few days ago, some of you saw my mother, 81 years old. She joined us on our 6 a.m. prayer watch. I don't remember what day it is. This is her normal routine. 4 a.m. she gets up to pray. She she speaks excellently. She's 81. Nothing. No sick. No, no, no brain. Whatever. She walks with her two feet. Even when you tell her, mom, you need to come to London. She said, I need to do my evangelism. Because when you're a person of prayer, not on your watch will the devil touch your children. Not on your watch will the enemy take what he didn't create. Not on your watch will the enemy destroy that which he didn't build. I want to say, Lord, ah, Jesus, the yoke breaker, break the yokes around me. The yokes of laziness. The things that tell me, no, 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 no. I can't spend 30 minutes in prayer. I can't spend an hour in prayer. That spirit of buying and selling that runs in the minds of people. There are some people when it's time to pray, that is when the bed begins to tell you it's time to snow. But the minute there is one show online, you are watching till early hours of the morning. Your Netflix, for, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. Child of God, get me right. I believe in thought, John, too. You must live a balanced life. But you must make prayer your priority. You pray and then you can slay. You pray and then you can play. You pray and then you can do whatever. But prayer is a must. The Bible says that Jesus said, it is written. It's not Apostle Laziness saying it. It is the word of God saying it. That you, the house of God. So even when people are saying, ah, we don't need to go back to church. Church is in your home. You that said church is in your home, have you prayed? You that said church is you. What is going on in the place of prayer since you stopped going to church? How has the thermostat of prayer been in your life? Have you completely lost touch? Have you completely lost the power to stand in the place of prayer? What has changed in you? So sometimes that's why I say do not follow those that are talking. 
You cannot put a six months old child in the house and say, eat, microwave your food and eat. Some people have been Christians for 20 years, but in the realms of the spirit, they are six months old. They've not started walking. It is the church that upholds them. Some, the only prayer they pray is when they are in church. The only time they call upon God is on Sunday. Some, it's only once in a year that they go to church, the 31st. And after they pray that day, they've covered all the prayer for the whole year. They're going to say, Father, use me. Use my life. Let me not only be a person of prayer, but let me lead others in the place of prayer. Father, every yoke in my life, every spiritual yoke. You know, I said something when we say Jesus, the yoke breaker, but we're not talking about demons. We're not talking about, you know, many times we want to think about demons, 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 demons. Yes, demons are real. We bind them, we cast them out. But when I'm talking about some things that you have yoked your life with, some behaviors, some attitudes, some, 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 some habits, let me use the right word. There are some habits that we have yoked ourselves with. And these habits are hampering us in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting. In the place of spiritual matters, these things are stopping us. But today, by the power in the name of Jesus, we are breaking loose from every yoke in the name of Jesus. Whatever that looks like a yoke in your life, they are breaking off in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. So we see this donkey because Jesus sat on his life. <laughs> they said, Donkey. You don't need to walk on the floor. The floor is too dirty. Leave our clothes. Let it be the dirty one. Let's place our fabrics on the floor so that you can walk with honor. The donkey that had no honor, suddenly, because Jesus took over the reins of his life, the donkey was now leading Jesus. Let me tell you, you cannot follow the master and not be advantaged. The Bible says in verse 14. Then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple. And he healed them. Buying and selling. Will stop. God's plan for your life. Spiritual buying and selling. Being spiritually unserious. The blind could not come. The lame could not come into the temple. Why? Because instead of the house of God to be a place for spiritual deliverance is now a place for I'm selling this, I'm buying this, social gathering, meeting up with friends, this and that, gossip center. That is what they turned the church to. But the Lord said something. You have made it a den of thieves. When the church becomes a den of thieves, what do, they, what do thieves do? They steal. Any place where they steal is not a church. Any place where prayer is not a focus is not a church. He said that you have made it a place where instead of people coming to seek the face of God, because it is in prayer, there is a two-way communication. You are talking to God. And God is talking back to you. You're speaking to the Father. The Father is speaking back to you. The place God dwells is a place of communication. The place God dwells is a place where God is the center. Where there is buying and selling, God is pushed out of the equation. And wherever God is pushed out, there cannot be genuine miracles. That is why you see some ministers that fake miracles. It's because the place is a den of thieves. Where they come to steal your money. Where they come to lie to you. The purpose of that gathering, the purpose of that building is to steal money from people. In such a place, miracles cannot take place. In such a place, prayer cannot be the objective. That is why the Bible is a complete place where you can know where is a true church. The Bible is a complete place where you can know. I remember somebody, I visited a church once, somebody invited me. For good 30 minutes, 
The only thing I saw on the screen was adverts. Adverts of books, adverts of this, adverts of that. I was waiting. Has the service started? Advert, advert, drama, advert, advert, advert continued. By the time they sang for five minutes, the word came for 20 minutes. The next thing we saw people by the bookshop, by the buying and selling, service was over. I held myself and said, so if they ask somebody, did you go to church today? They will say, yes, I did. What did we hear? Drama. What did we hear? Advert. 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 People of God. That is what the Lord said here. When Jesus went into the temple of God, every church is God's own. It doesn't belong to anybody. It's God's own. He said he drove out those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seat of those who drove, sold droves and said to them, my house shall be called the house of prayer. And if you read the next verse 14, I said, and then... The blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. When there is buying and selling, the lame cannot come to Jesus. When there is buying and selling in the temple of God, the blind cannot come to Jesus. When there is buying and selling in the house of God, those with their situation don't receive their healing. This blind and the lame have been there all this while. They have been waiting for that moment of tranquility. Because in where prayer takes place, anything can happen. Any miracle can happen. Any yoke can be broken. That is what happens in the place of prayer. That is why the devil fights any ministry that carries the mantle of prayer. That is why the devil fights any place that prayer is of is topmost but we prevail by the blood of jesus we prevail by the power in the name of jesus it doesn't matter the battle in front of us we prevail we prevail we prevail in the name of jesus i want to say father we thank you because from henceforth jesus the yoke breaker is breaking away every chain every yoke every buying and selling out of our lives He's been broken. He's been destroyed. He's been destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Child of God. Tonight we are still coming back at 6pm. And by the grace of God we are going to be on Instagram. Hallelujah. We will be on Instagram. Just follow immediately. Apostle Lezinet on Instagram. I'll be airing on Instagram at 6 I'll be airing on, on Facebook at 6 and subsequently YouTube will be on by the special grace of God. Child of God, I want you to know that Jesus, the yoke breaker, is still in the business of breaking yokes. But you must allow him to break those yokes. You must allow him to build you. You must allow him to lead. Many times the Lord breaks off yokes from people. But instead of them coming to serve the master, they serve themselves. When Jesus released the, the, the ropes that held down the colt and the donkey, they followed Jesus and allowed Jesus to use them. When you allow Jesus to use you, when you allow Jesus to sit on you, when you allow Jesus to navigate your life, whatever that looks like a yoke in your life, breaks on his own accord because the anointing of the lord rests upon you and causes you to be free to move i pray for you in the name of jesus any kind of yoke that has held you bound be loosed in the name of jesus and be set free in the name of jesus so shall it be in jesus mighty name we pray amen i will not end this broadcast without giving you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I just want you to say this prayer with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess that I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins and cleanse me. Jesus, I believe you died and on the third day you rose again. Come into my heart, come into my life. 
Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and personal Savior. Holy Spirit, come breathe in me. Teach me the word of God. Teach me the word of God that I may grow in the things of the Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. If you just said this prayer, congratulations. Welcome into the body of Christ. Welcome into the kingdom where we win all our battles in spite of all our challenges. The Lord causes us to be victorious through it. And I pray for you. The same power of God that led you into his kingdom will keep you until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want you to send me an email on prayerjumpstart at gmail.com or you can write me personally at info at, at ezineijoma.com or you can visit my website www.ezineijoma.com and I want to hear from you. I want to send you this book, Prayer Jumpstart. It will help you in the place of prayer. It will teach you everything you need to know about prayer. Or even if you have, you're have you already born again, you can get hold of this book in on Amazon. The book is there. I believe it will bless your life tremendously in the name of Jesus. Remember, you are the house of God. You are the house of prayer. And Jesus, the yoke breaker, is still interested in breaking whatever yokes, habits, burdens, that are upon your life. Remain blessed. And I look forward to seeing you at 6 o'clock. God bless you. And remember, with Jesus, all things are possible. This is our season of divine compensation. I look forward to hearing all your testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Have an awesome, great day. God bless you. Bye.